You are welcome to my channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Today I will be talking about the Igbo pre-colonial political administration. The Igbo people. The Igbo people are an ethnic group native to the present-day South Central and Southeastern Nigeria. Geographically, the Igbo homeland is divided into two unequal sections by the Niger River, an eastern and a western section. The Igbo people are one of the largest ethnic groups in Africa. The Igbo language is divided into numerous numerous regional dialects, and somewhat mutually intelligible with the larger Igboid cluster, the Igbo homeland straddles the lower Niger River, east and south of the Edoid and Idamoid groups, and west of the Ibibuoid cluster. In rural Nigeria, Igbo people work mostly as craftsmen, farmers and traders. The most important crop is the yam. Other staple crops include cassava and taro. The Igbos are also highly urbanized, with some of the largest metropolitan areas. Igbo pre-colonial political system. As a result of the existence of many political institutions in Igbo land, there was no centralization of power among the Igbo. Instead, political institutions were performing similar or different functions. There were no traditional rulers in the form of kings as among the Yoruba and Hausa Fulani, and so no hereditary claims to traditional stools. In this setting, there was never an Igbo kingdom or empire. The largest political unit was the village. The various institutions that exercised governmental power included family heads, the council of elders or the Ofo title holders, the age grades, the Ozo title holders as well as the lineage heads. You are still watching the origin, where we bring to you styles, makings, history, culture and traditions. Please subscribe to my channel. Back to the business of the day. Igbo pre-colonial political system. The Igbo pre-colonial political system was described by many scholars as an acephalous political system which can be translated as a leaderless or chiefless political system. This term is suitable for describing the Igbo pre-colonial political system because it was decentralized and based on village and direct democracy where everyone in the village has the authority to contribute in decision-making. Each Igbo village was seen as a political unit inhabited by related families who were bounded by common beliefs and origin. Each family head in the village held the Ofo title and altogether formed the Council of Elders. The Council of Elders presided over important issues on the village's welfare safety, development, and so on. Among the Council of Elders, one was recognized as the most senior to others. He was the Akpara. He could call for an adjourn a meeting and could also give judgments as well. The Council of Elders were believed to be earthly representatives of the Igbo ancestors. They maintained the age-long customs, traditions, and laws of the land. These included laws against misbehavior or immoral acts in which suitable punishment would be meted out to its perpetrators. Another important institution in the Igbo political system was the age grade. The age grade consisted of youngsters that belonged to the same age group. The senior age group maintained peace and order in the village and also provided security to ward off external attacks, while the junior age group concentrated on the sanitation of the community and other necessary duties. The age grade were also involved in the administration of the village and as well acted as a check to the Council of Elders and other administrative bodies. Another level in the Igbo political administration were the Ozo title holders. This expensive title was conferred on wealthy and influential men in the community who after getting the title become recognized and could then preside over meetings with the village elders. Also, the priests were not left out in the administration of the village. Great importance were attached to them for they were believed to be the mouthpiece of the gods. Even the Council of Elders consulted the priests on matters that were beyond their powers, that is, matters that needed spiritual intervention. Therefore, different institutions were doggedly involved in administering the Igbo community, and powers were equally shared among them. In conclusion, the Igbo pre-colonial political system can be safely said to be similar to the modern Republican system of government in which the people are governed by their consent. Thank you for watching. Please drop your comments below, like and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.